the Minneapolis Riverfront was an area that was well known to the society as an important historic area. Milling, after all, is the foundation of the economy, not only of Minneapolis, but of the, all the area all the way reaching to the Rockies. Um, the mill uh, had been standing there, was built in the late 19th century. The Washburn Crosby Company had uh, abandoned flour milling in the area in 1965. When I started my own practice, um, seven years after I got out of school, uh, working in the building with another architect when it was uh, ab an abandoned mill, it had um, the sort of golden light coming through the flower dust covered windows uh, on the wooden machinery and wooden beams. Uh, there were flower piles on the floor. It was really an amazing place. Sort of eerie, you know, because uh, there were still Miller's hats hanging on hooks and uh, calendars with the days crossed off from, uh, you know, the 60s. But then that fire came, um, that cold February night. And um, at that point, we clearly had a crisis on our hands because one of the two national historic landmarks, Pillsbury and Washburn, the Washburn was in flames. That lit up all of downtown. It was uh, the building's eight stories tall and the fire was shooting out of it uh, another eight or 10 stories in kind of a single bonfire. Anybody who cared about the building or preservation was shocked by it and thought it was probably the end of the building. The building stood in ruin, fragile, uh, needing to be braced, and it was to Tom Meyer really to figure out how you could turn this ruin into something that could be used by the public and yet would honor the history of that place. Memis and R built a model of redevelopment within the burned out mill. Uh, and it showed some of the context uh, and other redevelopment in the area. We took that to the city council. We did this very quickly after the fire. And they, they really, they bought it. They, they saw that there was a vision in keeping this core historic building, not only from a preservation point of view, but from a redevelopment point of view. His connections to that were really visceral. They were genetic, if you can say. Um, and as a result, when the time came for us to begin to think about what we might do, Tom Meyer was the logical person. When I finally got a phone call that said that, yes, we were gonna be the architects of Mill City Museum, I was, of course, delighted. And uh, not only because the project was terrific, but because it uh, was uh, another step in a, uh, at that point, almost 30 year connection with this building and the riverfront. Interesting, when David McCullough came to Minnesota, he went through the new Mill City Museum, which opened in 2003. He said that no one should miss it. Anyone who comes to Minneapolis or anyone who lives here, no one should miss it, because it's our story that it tells. This was a part of the riverfront that was abandoned, an industrial site, filled with pollution, um, and the city had targeted it for redevelopment. So Mill City was seen as a potential catalyst for redevelopment. So we worked with the city's agenda in the sense of that the building needed to be not just a building that's um, an isolated structure, but is part of an urban fabric. Places have history. That place's place has great stories to tell that are important for all of us. Stories about immigration, stories about labor, stories about industry, stories about water power. All of those stories can be told by understanding something about that Minneapolis riverfront. There were very significant challenges about restoring and maintaining the ruined. We had to make up some details that I don't know if they had been really existed before. For instance, the jagged top of the, of the ruined wall um, would not survive in its post-fire state um, without an, an intervention. But we didn't want that intervention to look like an intervention. We wanted it to look like the day after the wall collapsed. If you look, lift your eyes and you look toward the ceiling, you'll see that the ceiling is charred. If you look at the walls in some areas, you'll see that some of the stone is gray and some of the stone is red. The red stone has been burned at very high temperatures. The gray stone has not. No attempt to somehow change those things, even as we have a really wonderful, modern, functional building. Any architect that's being honest will say, that if they've accomplished something with a building, it's because they had a great client. Uh, and a great client is someone who uh, has an, a point of view, uh, respects the expertise uh, of what an architect can bring, 
um, knows that architecture can be very significant. Nina had all those qualities. It was a tragedy that it burned, but with Tom Meyer's vision, we were able to take that tragedy and turn it into something magnificent. We did create something new, but we didn't destroy the old in the process. Her leadership in this way that, that made the project happen, got through political barriers and financial barriers through strong leadership. Um, she was a great supporter uh, of, of me personally and of the firm. Once she committed to us, uh, she knew that uh, her goals, her success was linked to our success. Well, the Mill City Museum won a national AIA award, which is very hard to do. And uh, I think it says uh, a lot about the way in which um, that project is uh, truly extraordinary nationally and maybe internationally. They created what is one of the more popular public places in the city, a place where they have weddings and great receptions and parties. And um, it's, it's a really rare opportunity that took the kind of vision of a client uh, and uh, an architectural firm to imagine something that had never been done before. I don't know of any other project that has inhabited a ruin the way that project has. And I think is significant in the sense that it has caused, I think, all of us to rethink ruins. Ruins are not something to tear down, but they're to inhabit and to reimagine. Shortly after the building opened, um, Maria Jette, who's a local uh, soprano, was at the Mill City Museum for an event. And she wasn't going to go home right away because there were some storm warnings. And so she went out into the courtyard, which was abandoned at that point, and just sang. And it was a magical moment for me. I said, this courtyard can come to life with music. And indeed, in the years following, it has come to life with music. It's a great place to go and hear music. Tom gave a great gift when he respected and left that courtyard intact. It's propped up. There are some, you'll notice, there are some supports there uh, to keep it in place, but it's a, it's a magnificent space. I call it our local version of the Baths of Caracalla in Rome.